Roll for Crit presents How to Play The Crew, the quest for Planet Nine in five minutes or less or more. The Crew is the cooperative trick-taking game of outer space exploration with limited communication, designed by Thomas Singh and published by Cosmos. Your goal in The Crew is to complete a series of missions with various objectives, coordinating with your team in order to complete tricks in various ways. Each player begins with a random hand of cards distributed evenly from a 40-card deck. In a three-player game, one person will have an extra card in hand, which won't be played. Each player will also have a radio communication token, green side up. There are five suits of cards, pink, green, blue, yellow, and rockets. Each suit has cards ranging in number from one to nine, with the exception of rockets, which only go from one to four. At the start of the game, whoever has the four rocket card in hand is designated as the commander. They take the first turn. On your turn, you'll choose a card from your hand and play it to the center of the table. The first card played will determine the suit for the remainder of the trick, which other players must follow if possible. For example, if the first card played is pink and the next player has pink cards in hand, they must follow suit by playing one of them on top of the previous card on their turn. Higher numbers will increase your chances of winning the trick, but you're allowed to play any card of the matching suit that you have. If you do not have a card of the matching suit to follow with, then and only then you can play any other card in your hand instead. This will not change the initial suit for the trick as it was established previously. After all players have played one card to the center of the table, the round or trick is complete. The player who played the card matching the trick suit with the highest number wins that trick. Rocket cards are trump cards, meaning that they trump every other suit. The player who played a rocket card will win a trick regardless of higher numbers in play. If there are multiple rocket cards in a trick, then the highest rocket card wins. And rocket cards can be played as the first card of a trick, establishing the suit just like any other. Once a trick is over, the cards played into it are put aside, and the winner of that trick chooses a card in their hand to begin a new one. You're allowed to look through the cards of the most recent trick, but anything earlier than that must be kept face down. So far it sounds pretty simple, but there's more. Depending on which mission you're attempting, there may be one or more task cards in play, which players will be attempting to fulfill. The commander chooses one task card to take in front of them. Then the other players do the same in turn order, taking one card at a time until there are none remaining. Your task card tells you which trick you need to win in order for the mission to be successful. For example, if you have the blue three task, that means that you must win the trick wherein the blue three card is played. It doesn't matter if you play it or if someone else does, as long as you have the highest card of the proper suit during the trick in which it is present. For this reason, players won't always want to win every trick. You'll need to pay attention to everyone's tasks and be mindful of what they want. If any task is failed, the mission is aborted and must be restarted. When all tasks are complete, the mission ends and you've won, even if you still have cards left over. There's a catch though. During the game, players are not allowed to discuss strategy or cards in hand in any capacity, with one exception, your radio communication tokens. Before a trick begins, not during, but before, you may take one colored card from your hand, not a rocket card, and place it face up in front of you. Then, your communication token will be positioned according to that card's status in your hand. At the top, if it's the highest card you have of that suit, at the bottom, if it's the lowest card you have of that suit, or in the middle, if it's the only card you have of that suit. If a card doesn't meet one of those three conditions, then it can't be chosen as your communicated card. You'll receive a reminder card in hand if you choose to communicate this way, to remind yourself and others that you have another card that can be played on the table. Later on, the status of this card could change. For example, your highest card of that suit might become your only card of that suit after playing a few rounds. However, the token remains in the position it started in no matter what. Once you play that card, discard your reminder card and flip your token to its red side. You can only communicate this way once per mission. This is the only way to indicate information about your hand to your teammates. If you're struggling with a mission, you can activate the Distress Signal token. If activated, then after all tasks have been distributed, but before any radio communication takes place, each player must pass one card from their hand to a player next to them. Players decide as a group whether they want to pass to the left or the right. Use of the Distress Signal will be noted in your log and will take away points from your overall score. As the missions progress, they will get more and more difficult and add increasingly complicated effects. For example, tasks may need to be completed in a specified order, or communication could be made more difficult. If you manage to complete all 50 missions, then you've discovered the mysterious ninth planet and won the game. In conclusion, communicate, but don't communicate. Play cards, fulfill tasks, and complete missions. That's the crew in a nutshell. Did you get all that?